Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White, I'm an employment attorney, and we're answering a publicly posted question from a YouTube user today. I believe the name is Al D. This question was posted nine days ago. We messaged back and forth a little bit, um, so I apologize for the slow turnaround. I didn't actually make many videos last week. Here is the question. He says, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thanks, sincerely. Uh, I'm trying. I know I fall short. It's kind of like who I am. I'm always a little less than uh, I want to be. But um, I'm trying. Can you do a video on last chance agreements when being a civil servant? How does an employer get to that level with an employee? And is there a time limit on how long a last chance agreement remains in an employee's file? Okay, so I have limited experiences with these. Um, I've seen them in a couple of different situations. Yes, with civil servants, but only in the state of New York. So I'm going to give you the most generalized information of what I saw. And what I saw was not great. Don't, don't love last chance agreements. So in the state of New York, civil servants have, fundamentally, they have rights to a hearing if they're being terminated. They get to prove, hey, what you're saying didn't happen or it doesn't rise to termination, right? What a last chance agreement is, is essentially an agreement in my experience, where the employer says, listen, you messed up. You messed up many times, many ways, or in a big way. And we think we have enough to terminate you. You as the employee might agree or disagree, but that's what the employer is saying, right? And the employer goes on, but we don't want to take you to hearing, either because we don't actually want to fire you or because taking you to that hearing is expensive. Here in New York, it's a Section 75 hearing. And so what they say to you is, you sign this last chance agreement. If you do anything else, you're out of here. No hearing. You give up your hearing rights for a period of time. Now, if that agreement, to answer your first question, uh, I guess to answer your last question here, on how long it can remain in, the, in your file. So you're going to want to see two things in that agreement. One, how long does it remain in effect, right? Because someday, some way, you're going to end up coming in late. Something's going to happen. So, something will always happen, right? Nobody can be perfect every day for 20 years. So you want to make sure you know when the last chance arrangement ends and you return to your full rights as a civil servant, right? You, you don't want to be on that tightrope for the rest of your career. So when does it end? When does it go out of effect? The second date you're hoping to have in that agreement is when it gets pulled from your file. Many of these will not have a second date. Some of these will be very aggressive and may not have any discussion about when they go out of effect. I believe the ones that don't mention when they're no longer in effect to be invalid. But that being said, people still operate that way and I've seen it done. I've seen people try to like not have a date by which this ends in these agreements. So without, in your agreement, if you don't have a date when it comes out of your personnel file, it's just there, potentially there forever. So keep that in mind. Um, that's, I know, very, very light on the info, but I don't tend to get into civil service law that far. Um, it just wouldn't make sense for our firm because we're, you know, we, we're representing victims of sexual harassment and workplace discrimination in all 50 states, and I'm not going to be the best person to represent civil servants in all 50 states because there are a lot of quirks to the various systems. Things work differently in different places. There's a lot of similarities and people are going to be like, well, it's, you're still a civil servant. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But there's procedural differences. There's it, It's not the same. And if I'm not the best person for a job, I shouldn't be taking somebody's money on that job. You know what I mean? That simple. So uh, that is my perspective on that. I apologize I can't give you more information, but I would just urge you um, to think long and hard about whether or not your employer actually has enough to take you to hearing. And terminate you if they're trying to push you into, into a last chance agreement because often it it might seem that way but maybe it isn't 
and you know you might want to talk to your union who's advising you or whoever's advising you as to this agreement or even talk to an attorney right um hey do you think they have enough to terminate me do i need to do this is this is this drafted in a fair-minded way you know uh i hope that's helpful good luck to you and uh If it was helpful, like and subscribe. Take care.